94.9 CHRW. This is the come up show that I feel good music lives. Real recognized, real. Online with me right now, he's been all across Canada, starting from Sackville, New Brunswick on April 6th and ending on the 20th on Winnipeg, Manitoba. He's in uh, Guelph today, I believe, with his solo members, and on Sunday and yeah, Monday yeah. and the 15th, he's in Hamilton, and Tuesday, he's in London, Ontario. Please introduce yourself, sir. What's up? Mocha only here. Badlax Warriors. One time. Come up show. You know how we do. Yes, yes. I'm so glad to get a hold of you because Daryl from Urbanet gave me the wrong number, and I called some. It was a girl's like, you have the wrong number. Get out of here. And like... And I was like, yo, Daryl, yo, where's the right number, man? Give me the right number. So uh, he replied back. That's hilarious. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. 604 is Van- Vancouver. Or, uh, what's that? What area code is that? Vancouver. Okay, cool. So I'm, I'm glad that yeah. he, he uh, replied by uh, very quickly. Uh, so how are you doing, man? So is, this, is that true you're performing with Swollen Members today? Yeah, today. Well, I'm doing my own set. And then, uh, yes, we're doing, like, you know, a reunion set for sure <laughs> together. Swollen. When's the last time you've been on stage with them and actually performed? Uh, we, we actually do it a lot more frequently than people realize. Mm-hmm. It's sort of just, it's one of those things that just sort of happens, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, three or four times a year we, we do it. It's just, if the request is made, then it's pretty much easy to do. We all know the material and mm-hmm. we all really enjoy doing that on stage together. Mm-hmm. And the fans get a kick out of it, like you know what I'm saying. I'm proud of my own, my own catalog as a solo artist, but you know I'm also proud of what I accomplished with the uh, Swollen Members as well. And hopefully, in the future, we'll be doing more material together. That's amazing, man, and uh, I'm really glad to hear that. And those are some lucky fans because, because uh, uh, obviously, Swollen is on, on tour all across Canada. I'm guessing, and you're on tour as well too. So, Guelph is very lucky tonight. Yeah, see, here's the thing. I'm on tour across Canada. I started in Victoria, flew from Victoria to Halifax, uh, um, then out to Prince Edward Island and back through New Brunswick and uh, through Ontario, Ottawa and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I knew from the jump when this tour was being set up that I would be crossing paths with Swollen. Mm-hmm. So we made sure that it happened. We made sure it popped off correctly. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess uh, In like, fact, actually last, last night I played Oakville But before the Oakville show I stopped by uh, The venue In Toronto Where Swollen was performing And I sat in And did the autograph session With them So that was like a little Unexpected treat For the fans Definitely And you know I, I think you probably Get that question a lot Everyone's always asking you About your connection to Swollen And how your relationship Is going uh, with them As well too But uh, I guess uh, Is a perception that uh, do most people think that you you don't have a relationship with Swollen members nowadays, or do they think like, oh, you guys are not together, uh, you're you got beef or something, or, or what is the perception? Would you say from uh, from people? I'm not really sure what the perception is. I've had varied questions, right? Mm-hmm. You know, some people say, hey, you know, is everything all right? And some people are like, oh yeah, yeah, I heard you did it. The show was swollen recently, or, or you know, what I'm saying, or I seen swollen members in uh, in sleeping member, uh, sleeping members, <laughs> sleeping dogs in the sleeping dogs video. Mm-hmm. How'd that happen? I'm like, well, because it's my boys. Like I see them all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, we are friends. We've always been friends and bros since since the beginning of the nineties. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's not going to stop. Even if you know you don't see us currently doing music business together you know what I'm saying we're still in the same crew Battle Axe Warriors mm-hmm. is a real thing 100%. and I'm sure I got my own thing oh you got your own thing as well too and I'm really glad uh, to hear that as well too because it is part of your history as a, as a musician and uh, you can't you know deny that past and no one can and, and I'm glad that that it must feel good for you then right like uh, for you to do your solo thing and you have that relationship with them still as well like that that must feel good like mentally for you or you don't care <laughs> hello Moko Oli you still there huh he must have disconnected so I'm gonna call back right now on the come up show so if you guys don't know Moko Oli is gonna be in London Ontario this Tuesday April 16th and uh, I'm gonna call him right back right now for now enjoy the instrumentals uh, I forgot to talk about this instrumental tape that I have right here as well too uh, it's from uh, 
Niam is the name of the producer. Uh, the, uh, the instrumental tape is called Chronic Soul from Toronto as well, too. And this was released in late February. So check that out while I get Moko only back on the line. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me, Moko only? Yeah, for sure. Okay, awesome. Uh, so yeah, yeah. My, my bad. We got we got disconnected there. That's, uh, that's that new age technology for you. I know. You know, I always have this conversations with other people, and even with myself. I'm like, yo, we, we can do so many things with cell phones nowadays and smartphones, but the basics are still not mastered yet. Like, we get drop calls and we get all this bad qual- uh, call quality. I don't understand that, man. We could do like... Yeah, Whatever. they put so much effort into the internet aspect of it, but they forget the, the, the speaking aspect. The basics, the fundamentals, right? That's a whole yeah. other conversation. But right now you are on the Mammal Revolution Tour. Tell me what does that mean exactly? Uh, I don't know. It's a term that Robbie G came up with. Robbie G is the opener on this tour. He's mm-hmm. a, a Guelph MC. Um, and... Uh, yeah, he, he came up with that. So I don't know. I am the durable mammal. I mm-hmm. guess that has something to do with that because that's like a, a moniker I've always used mm-hmm. for myself. So uh, I don't know. people can make up their own interpretation of it. Un- un- understanding, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so it's funny that, um, you know, I've obviously interviewed you before. I listened to your music uh, thoroughly. But this is my first time when you come to London, Ontario. My first time going to see you live, and I'm really excited about that. I can't believe I've never seen a Mocha Only show live before. So pay me a picture, Mocha Only. What, what are we going to expect when you go on stage? And what, what goes down on a Mocha Only show? Okay, well, for this show, um, you know, I am currently still promoting Airport 6. Mm-hmm. So you can expect that I'm going to do some songs on Airport 6 right off the bat. That's the current album that's out right now. It's on Urban Air Records, Airport 6, Mocha Only. That came out um, in this past fall. So I'm promoting that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then usually what I do is uh, I sort of do a retrospective. I just go back through the years and choose certain selections from previous albums. And, um, you know, occasionally I may slip a swollen track in there or something, you know, something like an older battle axe mm-hmm. track or whatever. But overall, I like to have fun with the crowd. I really think crowd participation is important. You know, in today's society, it's like a lot of the younger people that come out to shows, they're, they're not familiar with how a rap show operates, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it takes a minute to... to get them to wild out but I, I'm trying to create a situation I want everybody to walk away from that show feeling satisfied feeling that they got their money's worth and feeling that they had an experience that they could never get by simply listening to an album or going to a nightclub mm-hmm. and that's so- I want to make people I, I like to make people smile I want to see people laugh and smile mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like I take my craft seriously but I don't take myself that seriously I'm I, poke fun at myself when I'm on stage like, you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. um, crack jokes on the crowd mm-hmm. um, I don't know just go nuts you know what I'm saying try to throw a good show definitely and uh, yeah and you energy know, energy yes energy and and uh, and, and, and uh, definitely a heavy freestyle aspect too a lot of freestyle goes on between the songs and there's uh, lots of unexpected things it's good it's a good time <laughs> That's good, man, and, I, I mean, and I'm glad uh, because, you know, I have this discussion uh, countless times with artists nowadays how important a live performance is. And the one uh, the, the one thing that you spoke about, upon right here is getting the crowd involved in it. Like, they feel like they're part of the show, actually, but instead of just staring well, at they someone. they are. They have to, like, this is hip-hop. I mm-hmm. want them to be part of the show. I don't want to be up there on some 
behold me, <laughs> great mocha. Everybody shut up. There's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I, I want to, you know, I want to give people dabs, reach out, give people handshakes, and uh, freestyle about the situation, what they're wearing, and all that stuff. You know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. I want, I want call and response action. You know, what I'm saying like the hip hop, a hip hop show is definitely about the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's not like in the other genres of music where people just sit there and be quiet and listen and then clap afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's about energy. It's your one time. It's your one freaking time to let loose. And you know what I'm saying? I, I, I look at myself as I'm a misfit in this music. I make the type of hip-hop music that nobody else makes. I take a lot of risks by doing things, you know, totally in my own way. Uh, um, I don't believe in copying, biting and shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A part of my language. Um, so, you know, I like to be a voice for the people that feel, you know, that they uh, maybe have had a voice before or whatever. The people that feel sort of uh, like oddballs or whatever, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Misfits. I am the voice of the Misfits. And actually, that's the title for my next LP that will be coming next year. Voice next of the Misfits. Winter, rather. I like that a voice lot. Voice of the Misfits. Yeah. I, I saw a, a, t a tweet like the other day saying uh, something like it said invest in a weird economy like weirdness is like it's to in, to show to sh to express your weirdness and to embrace other people's weirdness that's what it's about right now right like I think people are, have, have the confidence to be themselves well especially at a mocha only show you know what I'm <laughs> saying I, I want people to 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 laugh in spite of themselves and to put themselves out there and, and, you know, dance, throw your hands in the air and, like, uh, realize that I'm really trying to create a movement. I'm really trying to create a movement of of uh, people that feel like, they, they you know, the, the ones that feel like outcasts, the ones that have a specific taste in music or mm -hmm. maybe an eclectic outlook on life. That's why I started my own personal movement, which is Torture Runes. That's my personal movement. That's what, something I've been kicking off. I swear I thought we got disconnected for uh, there for a second because you just went silent. Uh, I'm glad. No, I, I just, I just, I said, I just, I, I just said what I said. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for your response. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, no, like uh, I'm listening to you as well too. Uh, and I, you know what I do as an interviewer? I get, I let people get what they need to say out, and I give up maybe a second of silence just to make sure that I'm not interrupting your thought process as well, too. And all good, all know. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, for the people tuning in right now, because the Ustream channel is going in, Twitter's going in. Um, I'm with uh, live right now with Mocha only. Uh, tweet us at the Come Up Show, or if you're on the Ustream channel right now, you can log in with your Facebook or Twitter account, and you can type up some questions as well, too. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Mocha only. A lot of your music, the songs that I hear, that it's mostly clean, or if there's profanity on it, it's censored. It's not. I don't hear too many. Uh, uh, swear words and is that a conscious decision or is that an accident or or no? Uh, like Airport Six when I was listening I to mean, that and a few. I don't other... really curse. Mm -hmm. I don't really curse a whole lot mm -hmm. in my day to day life. I figure there's a lot more like funny, funnier things that you could say instead of curses. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know. I, maybe it is a conscious decision because I've gone back when I'm mixing tracks and like edited the curses out I just uh, I, I don't really have an explanation for that to be honest with you it just sometimes it fits mm -hmm. sometimes it, it doesn't you know sometimes I find it irritating I'm like wow did I really need to actually write a curse in there <laughs> you know what I'm saying when I know I can get my point across without it mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah for but, sure hey, uh, hey. And I don't know if anyone's asked you about uh, the list that like uh, CBC released as well too in the interview the 25 uh, greatest Canadian rappers you replace uh, number 12 uh, how did you feel about that because uh, CBC obviously is a credible media outlet but they might not play a lot of hip hop on their station but there, uh, they did say there was other MCs who put uh, you know uh, the critique in there as well too so how did you feel about being number 12 on the 25 greatest Canadian rappers ever well, first off, I, my personal thoughts is that I believe that CBC is good with their hip-hop coverage. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And as you said, they are a credible source. Mm-hmm. Um, from my knowledge, this was the people's choice, the people's decision. From my, from what I understand, mm-hmm. is they reached out to a lot of people through many different avenues, basically put out a survey and then chose the average. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this wasn't. As far as I know, this wasn't just some writer at CBC personally coming up with his or her own list. This was done by the people Definitely. of the country. So, uh, what about um, um, how do I feel about it? Yeah. I, see, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's supposed to be in order mm-hmm. or, or or not. It doesn't say specifically by order. Um, it's cool. It's always nice to be recognized. I'll say that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, cool. If, if that's what the people feel, then I mean, that's a privilege for me, and I'm, I'm honored that people feel that way. I know for myself, like I, I put in a lot of work, and and you know, um, there's been a lot of times where I feel I don't get recognized for my efforts. So mm-hmm. I, I was happy to see that, most definitely. Did, what What are you at right now? Like last time, I it was like sixty five. Projects or something like that? Or what, do you know what you're yeah, at? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a lot, but I'm going to scale it down. Let's just say I'm at one project. Uh, Airport 6, go cop that. I have one album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, focus is good. Letting people say, yo, go, go go get this one thing right now. But honestly, like, look, for, I mean, in the past, I've actually heard people have negative criticism because I have so much material. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. How is that a negative thing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do they say? Oh, exactly? you record too much. Ah. Uh, okay. Like, that's a, like, I don't really pay attention to a whole lot of that. You know what people say negative-wise, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, I just do what I do. I do what I want to do. I don't do what you want me to do. I don't do what the media wants me to do. I don't do what record companies want me to do. I do what I do want to do that's why I'm the voice of the misfits you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and, and I, I, I don't I don't have to subscribe to everybody else's frame of thought I have my own frame of thought and sometimes I get persecuted for it and sometimes I get celebrated for it that's life that's life and uh, and this is your you know decisive uh, someone asked decisive the same thing as well too how do you record so much music that's my man decisive is my man I mean, dude, what the frig else am I gonna do? Yeah, yeah, to tell you the truth. that's what exactly what decisive is like. He's like, this is my job. What what else do you want me to do? And and uh, I wanted to talk about. Yes, this is your job. This is your. Uh, you chose to p- uh, pursue music full time. And I wanted to talk about when he made that decision. I believe in an interview. I remember you, there was a Far Side show. You couldn't. You almost couldn't make it because you had to work your job. And you're like, what am I doing? Like I could be at this Far Side show right now, and I've been doing my thing since what eighty eight or. And you decided to quit at that moment. And I think uh, that's something that artists can always uh, relate with. And not only artists, anyone where they quit their nine to five and they pursue something that they're truly uh, passionate about. But it's something that obviously is hard to do. And some people uh, get caught up in their fears. So what advice would you give to people who are in that position of they want to do music or they want to do what they love full time, but they're scared about it? Do it. Take the risk. Mm-hmm. The risk is better, man. Having having the freedom to do what you want to do outweighs any sort of, you know, negative connotation you may have on it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people would feel like, well, okay, I could do that, but damn, uh, I got these bills or whatever, you know? That's when you got to be, you got to use a little ingenuity. You know what I'm saying? You you really think you got what it takes to be, you know, be a fly musician and, and do this? Go for it. If you need some ends covered, take a bank loan out. Get some. Get your friends to help you. Do whatever it is you got to do. Just uh, explore your options. That's what I would say. Yeah, because you don't want to live with regrets. And even if you do fail, uh, if you do fail, then you know they need. You know you have your answer, right? Like. Well, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. You can never really fail. Hmm. It may take years. To get where you know you're, you're happy with, but uh, you know there there is no fail if you go at something 100 percent and you just relentlessly go at it. 
there's no way you can fail. <laughs> but you have to understand that there's a difference between just doing something as opposed to going all out and giving it your your very everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I could just see a scenario where, you know, some rapper wants to be, you know, make it his full-time career or her full-time career mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they quit their job and they come up with a plan and maybe they do it for two two years and three years and it's not giving them back what they thought it was and they're asking, oh, man, well, this, you know, that's, that ideology is wrong. It's, it's not going to work. Well, they haven't given it their all. They just, like, you know, it's a never-ending quest, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, like, I have some good years and I have some low years. When I experienced hard times in this music business, I didn't stop. It just made me work harder. And more importantly, I enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. I just work my ass off and just, you know, um, and try good, to make good art. And good things happen when you work hard, right? Good things happen when you believe in yourself and, and when you, you expect good things to happen. You know what I mean? But just with, with, with everything, you have to, I mean, you have to be dope. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you, have to, you have to excel in your craft. Hmm. You have to be exceptional. It doesn't mean that you have to look at everybody else and be like, oh my God, I can never be as good as this person. No, you got to be the best that you can be. Just, you know what I'm saying? Cross no reference your cross reference your material if you need to, but impress yourself. Uh, be your own character. Come up, be your own author. Come up with your own material. Make your own story. Paint your own picture and be happy with it and, and make it the best picture that you could possibly come up with. That's a winning, that's winning right there. Hmm. We're, we're getting really deep right now, man. <laughs> that's amazing, though. I, I, I really appreciate that, Mokoni. And, like, you've come a long way. I was reading in that same interview with uh, UG Smag that you were, you, were, you were living in a dumpster in a garbage can and off and on and, like, in 1991 would, would prevail. Is that, is that true? Well, I mean, yeah, we, it was, you know, kind of exaggerated. We weren't <laughs> living in a dumpster, per se. Okay. It's just that it's like we had a few nights here and there where we didn't have no place to crash. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would be kind of funny if we, had like, slept in a, a garbage dumpster, like a, a recycled container dumpster or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, it was no big deal. And, you know, we was teenagers. It, it was like, you know, teenagers do punk stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 100% man oh well I'm I'm glad <laughs> that it wasn't like that like for years uh, cause that's horrible nah, like nah that. because I mean what would that say about us that would say that we have no ingenuity to go beyond living in a garbage can you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so definitely probably when I first told that story or when Prevail first told that story we, we probably should have clarified or whatever <laughs> but at the time, I'm sure we just thought it'd be funny and people would get a kick out of it. True. And you know, media outlets nowadays, they like to glorify stuff and take it to what, you know, the next level, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, go for it. Cool. Whatever works, right? <laughs> um, any, press, any press is usable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, Moko Oli, who's, uh, who I have on the line right now, he's on a Mammal Revolution uh, tour. Uh, tonight, he is in Guelph with, uh, by himself, and he's also performing with uh, Soul and Members. Monday, yeah. at Hamilton. Uh, Tuesday, London, Ontario. Wednesday, in Mississauga. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have it up with the full dates on the comeupshow.com on our website as well, too. So, Moko Oli, don't mean to, to put you up on the spot right now, but I have a few tickets to give away for the London, Ontario show this Tuesday. So, how about you come up with an idea of how you, wanna, you want me to give away these tickets? Uh, maybe a trivia question or whatever you want. A trivia your question uh whatever you want whatever style that you want to give away and then after you say it i'll give away the number and people will call in for these tickets man i gotta be honest i'm kind of exhausted I, I don't know what i um man <laughs> you know, i've been on yeah worn out they taught me to, i don't know what <laughs> i did put you on the spot no nope. just, just give them away i don't know just 
Nope. Just, that's what we'll do then. Uh, the first person to call in right now, actually the first two people to call in right now at 519-661-3600, will get a pair of uh, tickets and uh, passes to the Mocha Only Show in London, Ontario. You have to be 19 plus as well too. So call in at 519-661-3600. Is there anything else you wanted yeah. to say, Mocha and, Only? And I'll, I'll sign, and I'll sign your forehead with a, with a marker. And you'll sign, his forehead, you'll sign their foreheads as well too. Okay. With a marker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are, anything yeah. else you want to say, Mokoli? Man, well, I, I want to thank you personally for, um, you know, the support and, and and the views and stuff, you know, saying that you've given me, like, I, I definitely appreciate it. It all counts. Mm-hmm. Um, I've enjoyed the interviews we've done, and, uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate you, so thank you. I appreciate that, and, and I appreciate your music, Mocha Only, and I cannot wait to see you this Tuesday uh, in London, Ontario. So these fi- uh, the phone lines are rigging. Uh, someone just gave up. Oh, Keep- I got one more thing to say real quick. Yeah, yeah. People, stay tuned. I, I do have a couple of projects coming before my next official album. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a mixtape dropping soon. It's called Dr. Do Much. There'll be some nice guests on there. And um, I have an EP and uh, being recorded with Prevail from Swollen. So there's a little something for you, just to let you know. Thank you very much, Moko Only. So I got to get to the lines. Don't give up, guys. Keep calling 519-661-3600. That's Moko Only. We'll see him on Tuesday. Peace out, homie. All right. And if anybody out there come to Guelph tonight, you won't be disappointed. disappointed. Yeah, only an hour away. So, like, yeah, you're right about yeah. that. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Okay, peace 